Hi everyone, welcome back to Sling Caper. Gorilla Snot is the title and uh, it's all about sealing up the left fuel tanks this time and getting black goo all over me, all over my clothes, pretty much everywhere except into the tank. Gorilla Snot, otherwise known as Pro Seal or this stuff anyway. Horrible, horrible sticky gooey mess. Um, so it hasn't changed the last time I used the stuff. So this is the main fuel tank that I'm getting ready to seal. So now I've got to mix up Gorilla Snot and rivet these pieces together. Um, haven't primed on the inside of the fuel tank and won't be of course. Um, that's one thing where the Allodyne treatment would be a good thing but it's just not, not something that we can do where we are. However, um, there it is, and here we go with the with the horrible sticky mess. A brief interruption to normal programming, just to show a picture here of where a rat chewed into our airline. So there's competition down there for space. Neat. I haven't actually seen one yet, fortunately. Anyway, on we go. Not wanting to bore everybody with uh, just watching a fairly menial bit. I've uh, just sped this up somewhat. So all as I'm doing is just joining the ribs to the front baffle for the main fuel tank. So I'll make it quick. After doing this I went back and flipped it over, put ProSeal over the shop side of the rivet and around the baffle or the rib for the internal of the tank to hopefully prevent a leak. Fingers crossed. I seem to be walking quite a few miles in this, I can't really explain it, that's just how I do things I guess. Okay well here I am working on the flap, I'm just about to attach the ribs to the skin and um, I figured it was probably time to tell another story. So this one sort of stems back to when I first did my um, commercial pilot's license which is uh, a lot of years ago now, and I can't actually remember what the year was, but anyway, um, after all the tests and everything, eventually passing the test and getting my license, um, it was time to get the very first commercial job out of the way, and so I turned up after getting my license in my hand um, to the flying school, which I had been uh, doing my training at, and my then, I guess, boss certainly became my boss in later, in, uh, later time, but at the time, the, um, the instructor, who I guess called my boss for the story, said, we've got a job for you. And there were two people sitting in the, in the flying school there, and it turned out that it was the local undertaker and his assistant. And the job that... Um, that my boss has got for me is to drop some ashes over an island. And uh, I probably shouldn't mention the island, although most people could figure out where that was. Uh, people who know me at least. So anyhow, um, my boss didn't give me any, any guidance at all on it. He just goes, well, you're a commercial pilot now, so you can figure it out yourself. Here's these two people. Um, they've got the ashes that we need scattering and, and go to it. So anyhow I was introduced to the, to the main undertaker and assistant and noticed that they had six Tupperware containers full of uh, human, human ashes after they'd obviously been um, cremated. And so I thought okay let's, um, let's have a bit of a think about this and the aeroplane that we were going to use was a Cessna 172. So I'd only ever fly the thing from my left hand seat. So <clears throat> I figured, well, that's how that's going to have to work out. So I got the undertaker to sit on the right hand side and the assistant I said, you can sit in the back there if you like. And she sat on the right hand side of the back seat and I was to fly the plane. And I, I briefed the undertaker that when we got to the, the area where he wanted to drop the ashes to tell me and we'd, I'd slow the aeroplane down so I didn't spread it halfway around the world. And um, 
you know, told him that uh, when it was time that he was to open the door and to make sure that he leaned out, or he, he you know, he managed to get this Tupperware container right outside the door before he took the top off, um, thinking about, you know, stuff stream and prop wash and all that sort of stuff, obviously trying to blow it back in. So he nodded in agreement and everything, and that's fine. So off we went and flew over the aisle, climbed up to about 2,000 feet, 2,500, I think, I can't really remember. Um, anyway, he goes, yeah, about here's good. So I said, okay, open the door. So he opened the door. Now, anybody who's sat in the 172 will realise that the seat's actually quite high from the, from the floor. And I'm pretty sure that this guy, um, whose name is Jason actually, which is probably a good thing, um, he must have looked at this gap quite a long way down uh, below where he was seated and thought, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lean out there, that's too hard. So he took the lid off um, the first top layer container and proceeded to throw it at the gap. And in that instant everything vanished. I couldn't see the instruments, I couldn't see anything. And every time I took a breath I felt my um, my throat dry out, and instantly he realised what had happened, of course, and <laughs> I didn't know whether to be sick or to laugh or what to do. And after what seems, after what seemed like uh, 20 minutes, which was probably only seconds, uh, the fog sort of cleared a little bit. And I looked over at the undertaker, and he looked highly embarrassed. He didn't know, he didn't know where to look. And his assistant, I turned around and looked at her, and she was just covered. She was white from head to toe. Um, the stuff had gone everywhere. It was just white. It looked like it had been snowing inside. And uh, so, anyway, that was that. Was that. And, and, you know, he didn't really know what to say after that. And, uh, you know, we, we managed to sort it out after that. And I said, you know, I. I I asked you to, to sort of lean out for a reason, and, and he obviously realised that after that event. So anyway, that was fine. We, we uh, managed to spread the, the other lot of ashes uh, reasonably successfully. And um, later on, when we got down to the ground, um, obviously we had to clean the aeroplane out. So this particular poor person, and I know the name, but I'm not going to reveal it, um, probably didn't really intend on ending up in a vacuum cleaner bag, but unfortunately that was the way that worked out. Um, and funny thing, um, about a week later the aeroplane was due for a uh, for an inspection, and so we took it in, and um, the, the engineer lifted the seats, and I don't know if you've ever seen um, how the human remains come out after it's been to the... Un the um, the crematorium, but uh, obviously there must be some bone left because it looked like it, it had been crushed up. And so there were these little cubes of what was obviously human bone. And um, Austin, the engineer, says, "Oh, what's this? You got plastic bits in the back." And so he he puts it up to his he puts it up to his mouth and he's he's biting it. And I said, actually, you don't really want to be doing that. That's uh, human remains. And he goes, yeah, 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 right. Well, he obviously didn't believe me. But anyway, that's the way that ended up. So, um, yeah, I just sort of share that story. A little bit of amusement. Some, uh, it, was a, it was a baptism and fire for the very first commercial drive they ever had. I did actually end up spreading more ashes in, in later years. But uh, I was an instructor at that point, And I decided that the way to do it was to sit on the right-hand side so the prop slipstream was kind of dragging it out from underneath and I got the undertaker to sit in the back whose backside was in a lot closer to the floor so I would just open the door and hold it open and get them just to lean forward and just out the, out the door and take the lid off and, and everything went perfectly well. So anyhow, a little bit of uh, humour for the day. Okay, enough of that nonsense, back to normal programming and here we are just riveting the bottom of the ribs to this flap skin and I can't do the tops until the rest of it is finished for alignment purposes and also because it needs a pre-closed inspection.
so I did have this recorded in the shop, but unfortunately there was music playing in the background and uh, not particularly good music at that, but that would have been a copyright strike. So here I am just saying that I'd pro-sealed the long-range tanks together, but unfortunately a couple of the rivets, the mandrels had broken off in the wrong place, which was uh, a bit annoying, so they were just sticking out with sharp points. So I can't file it all the way flat with a file, but I can get a little bit, but the rest of it will need a Dremel, I guess. And then the rest of it is the uh, full tanks, or the, or the main tanks, I guess I should call them, um, just sitting there, just cliqued in place, getting them all set um, and drilled out as well, because the factory dimpled holes in the uh, Ford Baffle are undersized, so they need drilling out. It is quite rewarding though, seeing it starting to take the shape of a wing, it's uh, quite exciting. Right, trying to get the light in the right place, just about impossible, but the main fuel tank is uh, just temporarily cleated onto the wing again, however, on the bottom, uh, she's all riveted up, so it's sealed and riveted along there. The sealing process took me an, about an hour with the um, with the sealant, to play with the sealant. So, got to do the top, obviously, the top half. I've just put it back onto the wing. It's been on to rivet it up and uh, off again, just to take the excess sealant off in a few areas. And I've just popped it back on to uh, dry for a little bit. We've just got to go out and buy a few more supplies, run out of gloves and a few things like that. But uh, hopefully this afternoon, um, I want to do the sealing on the top half I learnt from yesterday though that the afternoon's a pretty horrible time because the light just comes in here on a really awkward angle and when I was sealing up um, the long range tanks here it was a real pain, I couldn't see a thing so um, I'm just going to have to make sure that I get the light in the right spot so I can actually see what I'm doing other than that, it's coming along, it's quite satisfying hopefully we've managed to get a tank that doesn't leak so obviously there's a bit more sealing going on there yet but uh, fingers crossed, so far so good